Vietnam. Well, I'm not in Kansas anymore. I can still smell my mother's perfume from the last day I was with her. The house was lonely without Mom. Thomas took care of everything and everybody at the house. <laughs> Especially me. Oh, I wish I was with him now. Is that a cotton rag you using on Mr. B's car? How many times have I told you only the chamois rag? Chamois rag. And don't be playing that bebop or hooli mess on Mr. B's radio. He could turn it on expecting to hear Tony Bennett, and here come that rockin' boppin' hooey. He makes that poor man's life hell. Must be why we've had six drivers in the last eight years. I don't know why they call him drivers. He won't <laughs> let none of them drive. Oh, we let that one drive once. Sherman? Mm-hmm. He was number four. He let him drive all right on the way to the employment office to pick up number five. Threw the poor man out before he got <laughs> to the mailbox. Claimed he took his hands off the wheel. Yeah, from what I heard, Sherman was pretty good with his hands. He still is. You know, he drives for the lenses now. But he's off on Thursday nights. <laughs> you think he'll ever let this one drive? <laughs> Maybe someday. But not today. Today's the day they go to the cemetery.
just something about her. She was really sweet. Yes, she was that. She truly was. And boy, does she love you. <laughs> she used to call you her... Her little lamb. Huh. <laughs> I guess I mentioned that before, huh? Once or twice, but I like to hear it. Makes me feel like she's with me. <laughs> ah. Oh, Ed, there you are. I needed the car to take Mr. Shaughnessy to St. Louis. I'm sorry, sir. It's the 17th. How could it slip my mind? <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Sizemore at the Academy tells me you've been doing well with your studies. I guess I do, okay? Good. That's important. I, uh, I intend to send you to West Point in a few years, and that'll make things a lot easier for you. Yes, sir. Randy, tomorrow at the museum, I'd like to teach you about art. Not just who painted what and when, but what it really means. You're a Barrington. You're part of me. Can you understand any of that? Yeah. I have a dream that one day. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, look at all the colored flowers. With its governor having his lips dripping with the words of its One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. Mr. Randy. Now, what are you doing prowling around the kitchen this time of night? I'm kind of hungry. Didn't you eat your dinner? It was clams. Well, you know that's your father's favorite. He has them flown in special from Nantucket. Well, I didn't have the heart to tell him. I kind of hate them. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys watching? Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He had 200,000 people marching on Washington today. Mr. Randy, are you interested in this? Yes, I am. Uh, can you get the sound for me, please? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Randy, you take my seat. Thomas made some ribs. I'll fix you a plate. Oh, no, not right now. I want you to stay here and watch this. All right, Mr. Randy. I sure will. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plain. And the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the lights shall see it together. And now we come to Paul Gauguin, one of the French Impressionists. Actually, he spent some time at Arles with Van Gogh. I bet he had a better time in Tahiti with that lady. <laughs> well, at least she didn't cut off one of her ears. Just look at the care he took when he painted her. That's because he was in love with her. Well, what makes you say that? It says right here in the guidebook. Oh, well, be that as it may. Guys, do you see that? Do you see the grace and the dignity he gave her? I'll bet she already had those things. He just put it on a canvas. Do you think she's beautiful? I 
Let's go take a look at the old masters. There's a, uh, there's a Titian I want to show you. Bulletin from CBS News. President Kennedy shot today just as his motorcade... Oh, my God. report today, the president was hit in the head. Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Command, that's all right, sir. You were in Because he was waving back. He was, he was, the shot rang out and he slumped out of the seat. My God, God help us. Myself. What does this world come to? I beg your pardon, Mr. B. That's all right, Az. How can I help you? Well, sir, uh, I was wondering if I could have a couple of days off. Yeah, of course. Uh, is it something I can help you with? Uh, no, sir. I can manage. Fine. Take a week if you need it. Thank you, sir. Take it off and doing everything by yourself. <laughs> you remember Sherman, don't you? Of course. Hello, Sherman. Hello. I'd greatly appreciate a ride, Ethel. Thank you very much. <laughs> don't thank me. Thank Leon. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, man. I think I just lost somebody's fine set of luggage. That's mine. I was in a hurry. Mr. Randy, what the hell is he doing here? Does Mr. Barrington know he's gone? He told his father he was coming with us. At least that's what he told me. And you believe that? Do you really think that Randolph Barrington would send this boy down the road with a carload of Negroes and his clothes in a paper bag? Huh? Use your head. That's kidnapping, fool. Randy, you okay back there, son? Yeah, I'm fine. Look, we better get to the nearest payphone right now. You better let me drive. Uh, not this time. See, this is my car. And we'll go anywhere you say, but if you want to go, You'll put your behind in that back seat and you'll be quiet. Yes, sir. Well, Ethel's got a sister in Baltimore we can stay with, and I've got enough to get the boy a hotel room for the night. We'll be back sometime in the afternoon, day after tomorrow, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you for understanding, sir. Goodbye.
May I have a word with you, sir? What is it? Did you ever read about the prodigal son, Mr. B? I suppose so. Why? Well, the prodigal son ran away, and he really hurt his father's feelings. He was wrong, and he knew he was wrong. But when the boy came home, the father made a feast for him. And he ran out in the road and kissed him. About as old fine in the Bible as. This is real life. Please, sir. The boy didn't run away from you. He's looking for that one thing in his life, in his whole world, that makes sense. Right now, you have an opportunity to be that thing. Oh, come on, Mr. B. You've already got the feast. The only thing that's missing is that kiss. on such short notice? Can't be helped. Museum's in trouble. Threatening to sell off some road damn bronzes. Yeah. I'll put your bags in the car, sir. Now, thank you, Leo. Let me guess. Wolfgang Koner. Ah, they're a great find, Martin. The museums all know all they have to do is mention Koner's name, and he'll move heaven and earth to keep him out of the picture. <laughs> uh, you want to see me, sir? Ah, yes, yes. I'm going to be away till Monday, maybe Tuesday. Can you entertain Randy while I'm gone? Well, of course, but what about his big game on Saturday? Oh, damn it, the championships. You promised you'd be there. I'll, uh, I'll call him from Los Angeles. I'll get him that Koufax autograph he wanted. Yeah, we can do that, can't we, Martin? I imagine we could even get him Koufax if we wanted to. Good, then. That's settled. Uh, not quite, sir. What about my plans? Plans? Yes, sir. My cousin is singing at my church on Sunday. Well, I'll take Randy with you. To my church? <laughs> Why not? No, Marty, you stop making calls on that Koufax thing. He's my son. Do whatever it takes. The truth was, I did want to meet Koufax. Instead, I met the love of my life. Y'all never seen a car before? Yeah, my uncle has a car just like this. <laughs> you don't have to go in if you don't want to. I went to church a few times when my mom was alive. I just remember having to sit still. Well, our church is a little bit different, Randy. We believe in making a joyful noise. Take it to Jesus, take it. Take it to the Lord, take it. Take it to Jesus, take it. Take it to the Lord, take it. Take it to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I got a special treat for you today. He's been both on the radio and on the television. Here he is, whistling Willie Weston. Give him a big amen as he comes. Yeah. That's my 
cousin. Everybody say amen. 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 I may not be able to see you, but I can feel the truth in your hearts. Now, I know y'all y'all want to hear Whistling Willie, but I want to hear my niece, Hallie Gilmore. Go on, baby, sing. I'm going to ask her to come up here and start this song off for me. Coming up here, gal, Hallie. Go on, baby. Yeah, here, here, baby. Sing your song. Uh-huh. Isn't she pretty? Look just like a mama. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you ready? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Hello, young man. And who might you be? Well, this is Mr. Randy. He's uh, the man I work for. Well, the son of the man, Mr. Barrington. Nice to meet you, Mr. Barrington. I'm Bertha Lee. I'm Thomas's sister, his younger sister. You're the one that makes a lemon ice box pie. That's right. In fact, I got one at home right now. Thomas, I talked to Willie. I want you to bring them all over for dinner. This young man needs a fresh piece of lemon icebox pie. <laughs> oh, Bertha Lee. Yeah. Bertha Lee's husband got killed in a hurricane back home. I moved her and the kids up here. Thomas gave him his house to live in. He took good care of her, too. It was nothing. That house too big for me with Lizzie gone. <laughs> Don't listen to him. He's like the good Samaritan and Santa Claus to those kids. And where are the kids? Uh, young Marcus and Hallie. Hallie is the one you were preoccupied with. Mrs. Gilmore, where's your TV? Oh, I don't have one yet, baby. But I hope to one day. <laughs> Wouldn't make me no difference. <laughs> Let me take your hat, Willie. Mr. Weston, how come you're called Whistling Willie? <laughs> well, son, folks say that back when I was little, I used to whistle before I could speak, like I was, I was trying to sing already. My mother could always find out where I was, which by <laughs> listening for the whistle. <laughs> I guess the name just stuck. Do you like it? <laughs> you're sure an inquisitive young boy. You ask a lot of questions. And you, and you got this high tone way of, of speaking. You almost sound like a white boy. Uh, he is a little white boy. <laughs> Y'all come and eat dinner. It's on the table. This white boy talk to me. <laughs> come on, come on and get it. I got you, Uncle Willie. Uh, you don't mind, do you, son? This is my usual seat. But Thomas, you always sit right here. What do you do? Head of this house, you ought to sit at the head of the table. Oh, Randy, come sit right here next to me, baby. <sighs> Say grace. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. 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 <laughs> Tony do it all the time. Who's he? My friend Tony Gal. 
He's a she. your fine pretty suit. It's okay. One L will fix it. Is that your mama? No. She's the lady who keeps my father's house. Oh, kind of like Mr. Treadaway down at the grocery store. His wife threw him out and mama said she kept his house. <laughs> no, not exactly like that. Baker, you can do it all along. My turn to skate. You never skate. Yeah, but I always wanted to start. Oh, oh funny. Yeah, That's a circus story. Mm -hmm. I tell you about that fat guy that went to, to the owner's bar. No, you never told me about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this guy owns his bar, right? And, and this guy, the stutters, comes comes in. Hey, Randy. Randy, come on. Sit over here by me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Whistling Willie's going to tell us about time he worked with Muddy Waters. Oh, yeah. You want to hear that old story again? Yeah. All right. It was 1947. I hopped on this freight train to take it on down to Memphis, you see. And wait, wait, wait. W Willie, how, how are you going to hop on a freight train? I can hop just as good as anybody else hops. <laughs> I can hop trains and I can read music. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> you ain't got no sense. <laughs> you sure this is for me? Oh, yes, ma'am. If you're Mrs. Gilmore. I am. At least I think I am. <laughs> Seemed like a dream. Oh, look, Mama's got a remote control. Thank you for Sunday dinner. Randy. But, Mama, that's a little white boy. Oh, I can't accept it for just one little old measly Sunday dinner. Barings ain't can afford it. Marcus. What? Take it inside. <laughs> No sale, girl. We got to call the TV. Come on, come on. Berlin. Come on, Berlin. Oh, no, Mama, not those. Oh, Lord, Helen, now you know it ain't no way in God's name you're going to ever get your big foot back in those gates. I know, but they're too special. Maybe someday I'll have a daughter and she can wear them. Maybe one day I have me a yard sale where well, I don't get rid of none of this old junk. All right, come on. No, give them to me. I'm gonna put them back in your room. And I'm gonna keep my shell collection, too. You ain't the only one that got feelings. I'm sentimental, too. That's right. We just put it all back. Don't need to make no money today. Just put it back. Put it back. Mr. Barrington, what you doing in the Poe folks' neighborhood? Shopping. Oh, really? Yeah. For what? Um, <laughs> uh, one of these. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? 50 cents. For you, a dollar. Deal. Oh, you are some businessman, boy. <laughs> so, talk to your father about the summer yet? No way in 400, Al. But it's just for the summer. I mean, Alan has relatives in Atlanta that we can stay with. We'll be perfectly safe. But you won't be just in Atlanta. King has his people going all over the South, riding around in buses, sitting down in diners. Well, I can take care of myself. But why this? Hmm? This is not your fight. Well, I feel like it is. Look, son, I admire you for wanting to do what you think is right. But not now. Maybe next summer, after you've got a year of West Point under your belt. Meantime, you can always work for the cause right here in Kansas City. It wasn't the summer with Hallie I'd planned. Thank God for my best friend, Alan. Are you registered to vote? I am. 
Uh, what about you, ma'am? We can sign up right here. It only takes a minute. We gotta go to the post office. You know what they're afraid of? This. This is power. You can take the power, and they can't stop you. Come on, Agnes. Just a damn minute. I ain't never voted. But by God, I'm going to. What do I sign? Sign right here. What you want? Are you registered to vote, sir? No, I'm not. Voting is important, sir. It's how we stand up and be counted. You get away from my door, or I'm going to stand up and count your ass. Come on, Alan. Come on. This nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its oh my God. creed. We hold these truths to be so evident that all men are created in. An assassin's bullet failed King as he stood on the balcony of this motel. Marcus, is Hallie home? You need to get out of here. Please, let me see her for just a minute. I said go on. Leave us to grieve in our own way. They burned my furniture factory to the ground. Smashed all the presses in one of my newspapers. And these are the people you wanted to help? Want to help. Present tense. Do you know who will be put out of work by this? Hmm? Black people. Poor people. What the hell are they thinking? They're not thinking. They're just reacting. Their hopes and dreams were just murdered in Memphis. Well, it could have been you, Randy. If you were working with King, you could have been killed. Now, aren't you glad you didn't go? And now, graduating from Central High School with almost a B average. Yeah, right. At least that's what his mama says. <laughs> Mr. Harold Satterfield. Oh. That's my boy. You, now, brothers and sisters, we've come down to a young lady that we all know and love. She sang for us many times here at the church while she was growing up. And with that beautiful God-given voice, she's earned herself a, a scholarship to City College, graduating from Central High School with honors, Miss Hallie Gilmore. so proud? <laughs> well, I'm proud of you. Not just anybody gets to go to West Point. Well, I think when your father owns three congressmen and a senator, it's not so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, I'm not going. What? I applied to the University of California, Berkeley. Hallie and Winnie come with me. Randy, how? I can't afford to go there. Neither can you. The bear is not going to pay for it. I can get a partial scholarship in art history. And I think they'll give me a job at a museum. But what about us? I mean, we're just friends. We've never been. Why haven't we been? A million reasons. Well, does any of them measure up to this? 
I love you, Hallie. What if love's not enough? What if it has to be? What if it's all there is? What are you trying to do to me? Now I'm just trying to kiss you. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting, Dakeem. Where have you been? I have some things to do. I didn't realize we had company. Frank is not company. Practically family. Mm -hmm. And his friend. Hi, Alan Cooperberg. <clears throat> Alan and Randy are traveling all over the state this summer working for the movement. Sit down, Mr. Cooperberg. You sit down, son. Your dinner's getting cold. So, Alan, you ever had collard greens before? <laughs> Can't say that I have. <laughs> Careful, Mr. Cooperberg. Might be some salt pork in there. That's okay. I don't keep kosher. Marcus, don't be rude. Make sure you save room for kike. I mean cake. All right, that's enough. Marcus, I will not have racism at this table. Dakeem. Marcus is my slave name. Well, that shows how much you know. Your father named you for Marcus Garvey. A black man who raised a lot of money to free the slaves and give them a sense of their African heritage. Your people never were slaves. You don't even know anything about your own history. I know enough to know his people are the moneylenders for the oppressor. You may have reason to feel oppressed, but this young man had nothing to do with it. There are two dead Jewish boys buried in an earthen dam in Mississippi. If the shoe was on the other foot, would you go down there and die so that he could vote? My name is Thomas Lincoln Ayers. That ain't no slave name. I'm named after Thomas Jefferson, first white man who ever said all men are created equal. And Abraham Lincoln, the first one who did something about it. I'm still proud of both of them. Some things take time. We may not like it. We may hate it. But God has his own time for everything. Things will change, Marcus. In time. Now, these two young men want to do what they can to help. They need our support. They need our love our support. Now, would you pass me the black eyed peas, please? Thank you. Mr. Weston? Hmm? Do you remember me? Yeah, you that boy with all them questions. <laughs> yeah, I 
never forget a voice. <clears throat> this is my friend Alan. Hi. May we come in? No. <laughs> come on in here. Come on. Come on. Make yourself at home. Come on. Thomas called. Told me your boys are nearby. Tell me what you're doing. Good to see you. Yeah, blind people say that too. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you boys want some iced tea? Oh, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You boys are smart, but you ain't too observant, are you? What do you mean by that? <laughs> well, it's obvious. I'm not alone. There's a lady here. Oh, oh. well, you know, I, I'm sorry. If you and your girlfriend want privacy, that's... We, we, it's yeah, not we... his girlfriend. Allie. Hi, Alan. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Allen? Got mighty quiet in here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's some iced tea. Good. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, sit on down. Sit on down. Well, black was white. Hear that whipple wheel? Oh, yes, sir. Mm. My mother used to say, it's saying, the chip flew out of the white oak. Chip flew out of the white oak. <laughs> They say somebody's gonna die when you hear a whip or wheel. Hmm. Maybe it was for Senator Kennedy. Crying shame about that. Hmm. But then somebody's always dying. Somewhere in the world. Maybe they mean somebody that you love and care about. Maybe they mean we ought to care about somebody we don't know, too. Hmm? Good point. I can't believe you're here. I thought about you all day. I had to come. It was either that or sit in my room all day thinking about you. Worrying about you. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really nice of you to give uh, Randy and Helly a chance to be together. They love each other. I could hear it in their voices. I could feel it in the air. It's like somebody stuck a battery in my arm. <laughs> Doesn't matter to you that he's... Son, I've been blind all my life. Black and white don't mean nothing to me. It, Color's a concept I never could understand. Somebody say, this, this shirt is red. Right? This shirt is green. Hell, <laughs> it is shirts to me. <laughs> yeah. But now, now love. Now that's a concept I do understand. Look at you in this moonlight. She doth hang upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Romeo and Juliet. What's the matter? I love the play. I 
just don't like how it ends. Oh, come on. We won't turn out like that. I hope you're right. I know you're doing what you can to change things. I love you for that. Do you know why I love you? Why? No, really, I was hoping you knew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean is, I don't need a reason to love you. It's something that just is. Somebody's at the door. Uh, it's me, Einstein. Alan, not here. Hello? What's up? Hey, I, uh, checked this out already. We have to be in Joplin by noon. special memorial service. This young man was not a member of our church, but his parents kindly agreed to let us honor him in this way. So we're here today to thank God for the life of Alan Jacob Cooperberg. He's a fine young man. If only I could turn back time, man. It's okay. It's okay. Brandy. I'm sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a lot of things to think about. Would this be one of them? Dear Mr. Barrington, we're looking forward to your enrollment for our fall semester, etc., etc. You opened it? Well, it was addressed to Randolph Barrington. Should have told him to be sure to put the fourth on the outside. Were you going to tell me? Eventually. Do you know what an honor it is to be appointed to West Point? Yeah, for those who want to go, great one. Every Barrington man has gone to West Point for the last six generations. And maybe every one of them had a father pushing them into it. I mean, look at them up there. They look like a bunch of chessmen on a big stupid Barrington chessboard. Well, I don't want any part of it. Linnell, is Thomas coming back tonight? I don't know. Oh, yes, Thomas. Yes. I know you've always thought of him as more of a father than you do me. He's a friend to me. He's the one who put these ideas into your head. Him and that niece of his. You leave Allie out of this. I ought to damn well fire him for it. No. You can't do that. Thank you. What's wrong? There's something I have to tell you. What? I decided I'm, I'm gonna go to West Point after all. Why? Randy, I mean, what about all our plans? I know, 
I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I, I guess I could still go to City College, but they gave my scholarship to somebody else. I'll find a way to make it up to you. I promise. Please trust me. Okay. I got these savings bonds. You don't understand, do you? It's not about the money, Randy. You're leaving. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. <laughs> Look, Randy. You can find beauty anywhere, son. Even in the midst of despair. I'm very sorry uh, about the fire. I'm going to give $25,000 to help rebuild the church. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm giving it in both our names. I appreciate that, too. Randy. I, uh, I honestly believe that one day you'll come to a Thank me for insisting that you go to West Point. This mess in Vietnam is only getting worse. Maybe over in four years. If not, at, at least as an officer, you'll stand more chance of staying stateside. My only real concern was you. Your safety. I, uh, I don't know what I would do if anything ever happened to you. Randy, Easy, man. It's just another boot. Sorry if I startled you. No, it's okay. They, they really keep you jumping around here. <laughs> Tell me about it. My name's Nate Rogers. Randy Barrington. <laughs> Looks like I'm bivouacked in here with you. That's okay with you. I mean, because I'm... Late. 
black. <laughs> oh. Yeah, sure, man, no problem. <laughs> That's cool. You met Merch me yet? Yeah. He's a real dink. <laughs> More than that. He's truly dangerous. You know, say I'll do anything he can to get you thrown out. You can imagine how much he wants to get me thrown out. But the brass, they, they, they let him get away with that? Hell, they encourage that. They think guys like Merchman are the best way to prepare us for combat. Well, thanks for the warning. Hey, I gotta make a phone call. I'll see you in a bit. Got you again. Uh, idiot! <laughs> no, that food didn't suck that bad. Really? I think it seems like that because it sucks less than most other things here. Shit, Bumble Boys. When we get to combat, we'll be praying for Chow that good. You sound like you're looking forward to it. Yeah, well, maybe I am. Get over there and have a chance to waste a few gokes. Hey, cool it, man. Here goes Merchman. Problem here, girls. Sir, nothing, sir. Nothing, maggot? Nancy boy here doesn't agree with you. What's the matter, rich boy? Didn't like the chow? No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. Drop and give me 50. You're not counting. Start over. Yes, sir. One, two, three, four. What are you looking at, boot five, black? Six, sir, nothing, sir. Seven, Oh, well, maybe you don't like the chow either. Maybe you'd rather have your big old black mammy flop out one of her big old black tips so you can suck it. the end of the Barrington West Point tradition. Nothing else stood between Hallie and me after that. striking an upperclassman. They kick you out for that? 11 times. <laughs> what? <laughs> Go get your coat. What are you going to do? I don't know. I just know I want to be with you. Oh, you're the one. Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry. I have to go. Oh, okay. okay. trouble at the point. Why didn't you call me? Hmm? I could have made a few calls, twisted a few arms. I don't care. I'm not going back there. Well, then you'll go to VMI or the Citadel, somewhere away from that girl. Hallie? This is really about Hallie? Well, you might as well know that I'm in love with her. And I'm going to marry her. Oh, no, you're not. If you stay with that girl, I swear to you, I'll cut you off. Go ahead. I don't want your money. I don't want your name. No, Randy. Ayers, go after him. Bring him back. No, sir, Mr. Barrington. No, sir. I've spent my whole life taking orders from you. What little bit of life I got left is going to be spent the way I want it. Those two kids love each other, and that's good enough for me. And if it's not good enough for you, to hell with you, sir. I quit. I miss him. What can I do? Won't return my letters. Well, you've got the address. You could go to him in person. So, any luck? Not yet. I wish I could sell our district. Hey, I'll explain Picasso's blue period for a dollar. Hello. Hey, guys, how are you? Good, how are you? Hey, Rage. Hey, Randy. Okay, are we in table mode or bed mode? Because I could really go for bed mode. Mm -hmm. Let's just stay in table mode long enough so I can read the mail. Okay, make it quick. Sure you want to do that? It's already done. Oh, my God. Been drafted. Perhaps I should make a few phone calls. Get him into a reserve unit that's likely to stay stateside. No. Not until he comes to me and asks for my help. What? This is your only son. If you won't think about him, then think about your precious art. If you die without an heir, then the jackals will come in and they will divide it up. Is that what you want? Well, of course not. He'll, he'll come back to I me. I hope you're right. V 
Vietnam. So far from home. I miss Hallie and Thomas. And my father. You don't need to be lifting any more bricks, Uncle Thomas. She's pregnant. Well, you are. Oh, Lord have mercy, baby. Uncle Why don't you tell somebody? Uncle Thomas, I am oh, no, fine, you come okay? on over here and you sit down. I am Do fine. you need a drink of water? No, I have a ways to go. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> that don't beat all. A baby's coming. Does Randy know? I wrote him. Oh, I sure miss that boy. Me too. Hey, now it's gonna be all right, little Missy. Randy be home before you know. <laughs> A baby. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Barrington. CEO wants to see you in the coma tent. Looks like you're in deep shit, man. Now what? Good luck, Cherry. Private Barrington reporting, sir. You that shit bird that got kicked out of West Point? Sir? Got you again. Nate. <laughs> In all my glory. Man, am I glad to see you. <laughs> I saw your name on the replacement list. Pulled a few strings with Lieutenant Styles to get you in my squad. So, how'd you end up here? Merchman finally got to me, too. Hey, I never got to thank you for going at him for me. You're a legend, man. You guys are still talking about it. Really? Well, look where it got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Uncle Thomas, it's perfect. I knew you'd like it. And I brought it for the church rummage sale, but shoot, I grabbed it for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, have we gotten a lot of donations? We're getting there. Because we're going to have to sell a truckload of potholders and crocheted tissue box covers to <laughs> buy all the bricks and wood we need. Oh, I wish I could help out more. Well, you got enough to think about, little mama. <laughs> so listen, Hallie. Why don't you come and stay with your mother and I until Randy comes home? Well, I don't know, Uncle Thomas. I mean, this is our home. I know, baby. But you really shouldn't be alone right now. And your mother misses you so much. I miss you, too. Come on, what do you say? OK. Good. Can I see? If you want. It ain't much. Man. These are really good. I don't do them for anybody to see. Drawing just helps me keep my sanity. <laughs> well, my dad always said, you can find beauty anywhere. Your father's a smart man. Yeah. Here you go. But you're moving too slow. All right, Marcus, do you have the keys? For the fifth time, I got right, the suitcase. The Did somebody get the I got on the name. porch, on the porch. Come on. Don't slide down the porch. I got OK. I got now, unless one of y'all is going to have this baby, maybe I better go. Oh, Lord. 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 Oh,
Griffey, Renault. Move ahead, get a visual on the lieutenant. Rest you, take a rest. Stay alert. Who came in the mail today? <laughs> Can you believe it? My little girl. Six pounds, four ounces. <laughs> Petite little thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. You never told me Holly was a sister. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with it, that. Beautiful family, man. Beautiful. Thanks, man. you, Randy. Grateful nation. It's customary for the flag to go to the widow.
when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars. He will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love at night. And pay no worship to the garish sun. <laughs> painting to see you. I'm not interested in buying any more art. He says he served in the 82nd Airborne with Randy. Will you see him? Corporal Nate Rogers, sir. Welcome. Welcome. I feel like I know this house. From the way Randy talked about it. Spoke about the house. Yes, sir. And you too, of course. Really? So, what's that you got there? Well, sir, the only R and R we ever got before Randy. Well, the only one we had, we went to Bangkok. And all the guys, including me, wanted to hit the bars, but not Randy. First thing he did was to seek out the best tailor in the city. And he had this custom made. A uniform. Yes, sir. He said his regulation one wasn't good enough for what he had in mind. You see, he wanted to have a portrait painted for you, sir. He said it was like a family tradition. He found the best artist in Bangkok. He was supposed to sit for him on our next R&R, &R, but... Uh, well, he never got to. And I thought you should have that anyway. I'm no professional. I painted this from memory, but... My, sir. She's now my adopted daughter. Private Barrington gave his life to save hers. It won't compare to the masterpieces that you have here, but it's yours if you want it. You 
say to very, very much. Thank you, Corporal. You're welcome, sir. You're a, you're a better friend than an old fool deserves, Thomas. I've missed you too, Mr. B. Maybe we should be getting you back, Mr. B. No. Now you're gonna catch your death of cold out of here, Mr. B. Oh. I hope so, Thomas. I hope so. Isn't anybody gonna say it? Hmm? They can put a man on the moon, but they can't stop one man from dying. You are not dying, Mr. Barrington. Oh, oh Linnell. You've been a faithful employee, and I hope a good friend for 25 years. Yes, sir. I ought to know what dying feels like. Uh, I've been doing it all my life. One small step for man. <sighs> Turn that thing off. Bring me the painting. Yes, sir. And just bring it closer. I can't go through with this. I tell you, the man has changed. Okay, maybe some other time. Baby, there ain't gonna be many other times. Mr. B? Huh. There's someone here to see you. This is my niece and Randy's wife, Hallie. Hello. Oh, come closer. Don't be afraid. Hallie. I'm sorry it's taken us so long to meet. Well, you got there. This is your granddaughter. I have a granddaughter? Yes. Her name is Randy with an I.
you are a masterpiece of nature. Ready. Ready. With the knife. Cordially invited to attend an auction, the art of Randolph Barrington III. Invitation, please. Well, I don't see the other's proposal. Oh, my. Who's that? Ladies and gentlemen, your silence is requested, please. Thank you. As you no doubt know, the late Mr. Randolph Barrington had one of the largest and most valuable private art collections in the world. We will start with the least valuable pieces and move on to the most valuable. And so without any further ado, item number one. That's the painting of Randy. <laughs> this painting by an unknown artist it is an original oil on canvas. That's about all I can say for it. Mr. Barrington left specific instructions to open the bidding on this painting at $10,000. È un olio da un artista sconosciuto. Partiamo ad un prezzo base da 10.000 dollari. But no bids at $10,000. I bid. Ten thousand dollars. So did you say ten thousand dollars? That's exactly what I said. Ten thousand. Very well. I have a bid of ten thousand dollars. Is there any advance on the ten thousand? All right then. Ten thousand dollars going once. Going twice, sold for $10,000. Item number two. This uh, Remington bronze. Excuse me, Mrs. Colton. Yes. I have to interrupt at this time. Yes, Mr. Shaughnessy, please explain. Excuse me. Uh, yes. I am the attorney of the late Mr. Barrington. Mr. Barrington has left these final instructions in regard to the auction. Friends and associates, by now you have all been given a chance to bid on what has become my most valuable treasure. I am sure Queen Colton brought the house down when she announced the $10,000 opening bid. I trust that my very dear friend, Mr. Thomas Ayres, has found his way to these proceedings. I thank him now for his wise role in them. The collection will not be broken up after all. It is my final wish that whosoever acquires the painting of my son, Randy, will also inherit all that I have. And so, my friends, please say hello to the new owner of my entire collection. The auction is over. I cannot do this, Mr. Shaughnessy. This was not our deal. I just did. Shadows of night, no rainbow of color without 
black and white Just when you think that the world has turned blue A rainbow of color comes searching mm. for May I drive you home, Mrs. Barrington? Mr. Ayers. Father yes, I believe you Father and brother to son and mother to daughter We all wave in wonder to see to the depths of this painting called life that hold back the core of our struggle and strife. Time takes us all, we are prisms of light. You can't take it with you, so let it continue. Rich man or poor, it's the same in the end. The light we receive is the love that we send. Tonight. 